Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Ask Us Anything webinar today. Uh, we're just going to give it a, a, a one or two minutes just to give people a chance to join and then we will get underway. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're just going to give it uh, one more minute uh, to give people a chance to join and then we will get underway. Right. I don't think I can see anyone else joining, so let's uh, get started. Um, Thank you all for joining us today. This is the Ask Us Anything webinar. I'm Sahil. I'm the Key Partnerships Manager at Big Give. I may have spoken to some of you via email. And on the call as well is Beth, our Marketing Comms Manager, um, who we will be basically answering any questions that you have. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. So you may see a chat function at the on your right-hand side of your Zoom panel. Uh, please set your chat uh, reply to everyone so everyone can see what you're um, sharing. Um, feel free to introduce yourselves here with your name and organization. Um, you can use the chat to share ideas or network. Um, also, if there are any tech issues, please put them in the chat function and we'll pick it up, uh, pick it up there. Um, so we have two options for people to ask questions in this webinar. So you can either use the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom panel to post questions in there and we can pick them up. Or if you do want to speak to us, and we hope that you do because it makes it a bit more interactive rather than just us two speaking, um, you can use the raise hand function and we can unmute you and you can speak to us directly. So um, yeah, use one of those two options to ask us the questions. Um, if you need any transcription um, service, uh, if you click on the more button at the bottom of your Zoom panel, there should be an option to turn that on if you do require that. Um, and then we are recording this webinar and it will be available to watch on our YouTube channel after the session. And if you have any questions after the webinar has ended, please do contact us at hello at biggive.org. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so yeah, before we get kicked off with all the questions, we thought we'll just give you a bit of a campaign reminder um, for ways that you can start getting ready if you haven't already. We are just under kind of five weeks to go. So hopefully all of you are already starting to get ready. Um, but if not, and you haven't had access to our Trello board yet, and this is a great tool for you to use to get started within the Trello board. You'll have access to all of our brand guidelines, different um, template social media resources that you can use and um, access to like key messages and so on. So you can access this directly via your portal. If you go um, if you log in, go to the support section under kind to mind, you should be able to find this link. Um, under the marketing assets resource, I believe. Oh, Sahil's very helpfully put the link in the chat as well. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, you can go on this um, and have access to all of those resources. So a great tool if you haven't already. Another way to get campaign ready is to have a look at some of our case studies on the website. Um, these are case studies from some of our charity partners that have taken part in the Christmas challenge. Although it's a different campaign, a lot of the... Um, different examples that they use are transferable. So it's a really great way to have a look at just what's been successful in the past or think about some new ideas that you could then apply to your campaign in a new and interesting way. So I definitely encourage you to have a look at this, especially if you're new to Big Give or new to the Kind to Mind campaign. This is a great way just to think of new ideas on how you could uh, generate donations um, and interest in your projects. Um, another way to get campaign ready is peer-to-peer -peer learning. This is something that we really um, try to champion a lot here at Big Give. We want to encourage you to talk to some of your fellow charities, especially um, there are many that have taken part in Big Give campaigns multiple times. So they have lots of learnings and insights that are really helpful to new charities, especially. Um, but it's always good to find out more information directly from them. We do have a Facebook group um, that is obviously three for you to join um, and a great way to get in touch with some of those charities. Um, and obviously you can have your take your conversations offline if you don't want to 
talk directly in the group um but it is a great way to just get some really quick and easy answers during the campaign week whilst you're waiting for big give to reply to one of your emails or just a nice way to just ask charities about their own advice and things like that so i would definitely encourage you to uh, join that and connect with other charities taking part if you can and finally, and probably the most important thing on this list is to be aware of the campaign rules. Um, that week goes by so quickly. Um, so it's really important that you do make yourself aware of all of the things that are happening well in advance. So you're not caught by surprise during that campaign week. So I've listed just a couple um, of ways that you can do that here. So the most important thing is the payment options. Um, here listed on the side, you can see that some of the ones that we accept. Um, we can't match any offline donations you receive, such as cash and checks and so on. So it's good to be aware of this if you do have um, some kind of major donors lined up um, and wanting to donate to you during the campaign week. Other things that you must be aware of, you must accept your campaign offer to take part in the campaign. Uh, it seems fairly self-explanatory, but it does mean that you won't have access to any of the campaign dashboard portal, etc. if you don't accept your offer. So I'm sure all of you already have, but please do double check to make sure that you have. Um, all donations made during the campaign need to come by your Big Give campaign page. You should also all have access to your campaign page now. If for any reason that you don't, it's normally because your bank details either haven't been uploaded or they haven't been approved yet. So I definitely advise you just to have a look in your account section of the portal, check your bank details are there. Most of the time they've been um, already approved, but you can get in touch with us if you're unsure. Um, the donate button will appear on your campaign page at 12pm midday on the 14th and disappear at midday on the 28th. And um, this is our first kind of official two week campaign. So if you are used to big gift campaigns, uh, you'll know that they're normally one week span. So make sure you do um, update that in your comms and let your donors know that they do have two weeks to donate to you for this campaign. Um, we've already talked about bank details but other things is just note that you can edit all of the media on your campaign page um up until the campaign day or during the campaign week itself and um, so you'll be able to edit that yourself but you won't be able to change any of the text um you might be able to contact us if you, there's a few really urgent tweaks that you need to make but um yeah we can't make any changes to your project details or anything like that so i'll definitely advise you just to um be aware of that because we won't be able to make any changes when the campaign is live. Um, and very final thing for me, it's not an all or nothing campaign. That means that anything you do raise during the campaign week will be matched um, up until obviously your allocated match funding pot. Um, oh, I did lie about last thing for me. <laughs> this is the last thing for me. Um, as marketing and um comms manager here at Big Give. I'm also in charge of uh, supporting our retained PR agency um, to secure opportunities to really raise awareness and promote this campaign far and wide. So if you do have any um, celebrity ambassadors or supporters that are supporting you in this campaign, we would love to be connected with you um, so we can discuss ways that we can support you and our PR teams can support you to really shout about the project um, that you're doing for this campaign. So please do get in touch with us and we would love to hear some more. But with that, I think we'll open up to questions. Yes. Uh, just a uh, first question from Rachel. She just wanted to clarify the campaign length um so yeah beth if you just want to just uh repeat that again the campaign length and the dates yeah so the campaign is um the 14th of may to the 28th of may and it is a two-week campaign yeah and yeah it kicks off on midday and close on midday um so yeah that's something to be aware of so as soon as the campaign closes at midday we cannot take any further donations so do make sure your donors are aware of the specific timings there um yeah please do uh, uh start putting your questions in the box or raise your hand because um this whole webinar is uh basically reliant on how many questions we get um if we don't have any questions we will i guess we'll wrap up early but um uh, i'll start off uh, while people are thinking of some questions maybe beth if you can share with us some of uh, any of your top tips for successful campaigns 
Yeah, I mean, if you've been in a webinar with us before, you know, I normally say this all the time, but planning is key. I don't think it'll ever stop being key. But as much as you can plan in advance always makes things so much easier for you in terms of just the E during the campaign week and also being able to pivot if things happen that you don't expect. I think there was a few cases we saw in Christmas Challenge where they had a major donor lined up and then they they were supposed to donate at the end of the campaign and they donated like the first day. So they had to change with their comms and things but if you have like a bank of copy already prepared for all of those different scenarios that's a great way to just be planned well in advance and also thinking about alternative scenarios of if you're not as far along as you hoped by you know three days to go to the campaign what is your messaging going to be about incentivizing donors to um make those last minute donations whilst the opportunity is available so just yeah as much as you can plan and think about all the scenarios and different things that can happen during the week is really really important um and i would also say particularly with this campaign it's mental health awareness week um for between the 13th um and i want to say the was it the 13th and the 19th of May so really also capitalizing on the fact that that's big awareness campaign is also happening whilst this campaign is going on great uh yeah we've actually had uh some questions that have popped in so maybe we can start off there so uh two questions which um are quite similar so one from Kathy uh, sorry Catherine is asking is there a minimum amount to raise before donations will be matched by big give and a question from Kylie who's asking if we have a target to raise and we don't quite reach that, will that affect anything in terms of uh, match funding? Um, short answer, no. Anything you do raise is matched up to the amount of match funds you have available for your campaign. So if you don't hit your target, whatever you do raise will still be matched. Um, so it's not, as Beth said earlier on, it's not all or nothing campaign. So um, yeah, uh, just need to try and focus on reaching your target, but no, uh, it's you still receive the donations and whatever match funds you you have used up if you don't hit your target. Uh, Beth, if you can explain how to gain access to the Big Give portal and where they can find the login link, uh, that's for Laura. Um, she's new to the charity and um, I think she's just been taken on the role of leading the campaign. So if you could uh, just uh, let her know where to access that. Yeah, sure. Um, Laura, I'm just going to put the link in the chat. Essentially, that link can be found on our website. From there, you'll then be able to log in through your login details and access our charity portal. Um, if you don't, for any reason, have access to the charity portal yet, I would advise you to either get in touch with this person within your organization that does have access, and they'll be able to then um, support you to add, and add your team member so you can access the portal. Or um, you can contact us directly and we can try and help you get access. Um, but yeah, in that portal, you'll then have access to all of the campaign page. Um, it's under Big Give Campaigns. You'll find the Kind to Mind key campaign page and everything like that. Um, but definitely encourage you to email us if you have any uh, issues with accessing the portal for any reason. Um, Catherine has asked, how do the data permissions work, please? Um, so, yes, yeah, so we ask all donors if they want to opt in to receiving marketing comms from you um our marketing opt-in options only cover email addresses uh, sorry only cover email communications so you'll all have access to a donations report in your um campaign dashboard which is updated in real time and i show all the donor information how much they donated gift aid etc and their opt-in preferences so any donor that has opted in you will see their email address form we also share the donor ad home addresses with you, and that is only to be used for gift aid purposes if you're claiming gift aid yourself. You cannot contact donors via direct mail, but any donors where you see their email address for, you can add them to your mailing list. Uh, are there some... Had... Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, we had quite a few questions come in by the chat and um, so just to let you know if you can put them in the Q&A box that is really helpful so they don't get lost and um, but we have one from Hattie that says where can I get the guidelines for the campaign from um I'm I'm thinking this is related to just like campaign rules potentially campaign rules yeah and terms and conditions that is all available in the support area of of your account so if you log in and click on support and then click under kind to mind you should be able to find out 
all the um, sort of guidelines, all the marketing asset links, and also all, uh, the terms and conditions um, that you need for the campaign. So um, if you still can't find it, let us know and we can help you out there. Um, Lisa's asked, how successful is this campaign in comparison to the Christmas one? Um, would you be able to elaborate on what you mean in terms of success? Is it about charities that have received match funding or how big the campaign is in terms of amount raised? Um, if you just clarify that, we can yeah, best answer your question, uh, Lisa. Um, question for you, Beth, maybe. Uh, where can I download promotional material to help me raise awareness of the campaign? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's all um linking back to that Trello board that I mentioned earlier. I believe Sahil um put the link in the chat, so you might have to just scroll up um to find that. But in that Trello board, you should be able to find some social media templates, some other resources to really help you get started. Um, and all of the social media templates that we provide um are can are based on Canva. So if you have a Canva account, you can then go in, tweak them to your brand colors, add your logo, all of that. Um, and Canva Pro is free for nonprofit. So even if you don't have an account yet, I'd definitely encourage you to sign up. It's a great tool just to have as a free resource. Uh, do you have any questions, Beth, that you've picked out? Um, just see one from Victoria. Is there a link we use in our comms available on the dashboard? And if so, where? We would like to copy this into our literature so people can click on it on the campaign week. Uh, um, yeah. Go ahead, Sahil. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's available in your campaign dashboard. So if you go to your campaign dashboard, there is a view campaign page button. If you click on that, that is the link that you need to share with your supporters. As Beth mentioned earlier on, if um, if uh, if you click on that button and you don't see your campaign page, um, it's because your bank details either haven't been approved yet. Oh, I'm sorry, uploaded yet, or they have not been approved yet. So if you click on that button and you don't see your campaign page, let us know and we'll look into it for you. Um, but yeah, that's the link that you need to share with supporters. And when the campaign opens, a donate button will appear on that campaign page. Brilliant. And there's just one more in the chat before we move to the Q&A box. Um, are we okay to run fundraisers like bait sales in relation to this campaign? And the answer is yes, that's absolutely fine for you to run fun fundraisers or auctions or whatever relating to the event. Just important to note that obviously all donations need to come through your Big Give campaign page in order to be matched. So you might want to think about different ways that you might facilitate this, whether you have like laptops and tablets and stuff available for people to make their donations directly that way or whatever it is qr codes um but yeah just important to note that when you're making these events uh so um i think question for you uh beth would it be possible to get the logo without the black big give triangle without the white background please the one on the trello doesn't seem to have transparent background um so they would find it useful to have white that does uh, as the white doesn't match the one on their website. I don't know if we can share, if we have a transparent one. Um, so all of the logos on the Trello board should be transparent. Um, just think they want the, just the kind to mind logo, is that right? Uh, the black, I think the black big gift triangle. Okay, yeah. So if you want just the big give logo without the kind to mind, that's fine. You'll have to access it um a different way so if you log into the portal go to the support section there is like a general big give resource um section there and if you click on that you'll find all of our just plain big give logos and um, without the kind to mind uh blue um there's a question from natalie is there an upper limit of how much an individual can donate to the campaign um, and she would just want to clarify all donations up to our target will be match funded um she thought it was an all or nothing campaign um, yes, the maximum donation we can accept is 25k. Um, so yeah, up to donations up to 25,000, individual donations up to 25,000 pounds can be matched. And yep, it is not an all or nothing campaign. If you don't hit your target, whatever you do raise will still be matched. Uh, Great. There's one from... Courtney, just in relation to the charity portal, can there be more than one email address for access to our charity portal login? I'm currently using a team member's login to access the portal. 
Uh, yes, you can add team members to your account. Um, uh, so if you log into your account and then click on account and then click on team members, you can um, uh, there can be up to five users on each account um, to access um, yeah to access the account. Um, just to clarify, we can only send the campaign communication emails to one contact on the account. Um, so they will only go to one person on the account. If you do want to send it to colleagues, you can set up an auto forwarding rule in your own email inbox. So then any emails from us are also automatically forwarded to your colleagues. Um, that's what we would advise. Brilliant. Uh, Sahil. Um, Amy asks, what are some of the most successful ways to ensure that the campaign is a success? Um, I, I bet you sort of answered that before with your suggestions, didn't you? Um, it's uh, a really good question. Yeah. Um, and I think it can vary, obviously, depending on charities, like what one charity does might not necessarily work for what other charities do. But I think just a couple ones, obviously planning, most important thing, just to make sure internally you're all prepared and ready. Um, I know, Sahil, you say like, I think email, I don't know if you have any stats on email, but um, like email is one of the biggest drivers to the campaign page and encouraging to donations. So if you do have like a newsletters and an email subscriber list etc I would definitely try and utilize email as much as possible to encourage donations during the campaign week um, and I think just setting kind of goals for your campaign obviously the main goal is to raise as much donations as possible but you might have secondary goals around like increasing followers on social media and things like that so you're able to just track the success of the campaign in different ways so even if you don't raise reach your target necessarily you might say actually even though we didn't reach our target we did reach our secondary goal of increasing our followers by 20 people or whatever it is um yes yeah. <laughs> uh i think some tips i'd have is folk do your network mapping see who you want to reach out to and who who's in your network that can give um it's a really useful exercise. You may not realize who you know, like your trustees, they could know someone who knows someone that could be turned into a major donor. So really do that network mapping to help identify who you sort of want to target from your campaign. Um, and that can also help your marketing strategy. So if you do your network mapping and find out you want to target business uh, donors, for example, then it makes sense to focus most of your, for example, social media activity on LinkedIn rather than Facebook, for example. So if you are a small team, it's really helpful. And that's what we say is like, if you're a small team, not to spread yourself too thinly across different different channels and focus on where your, where your donors are or where the people that you want to donate are, um, rather than trying to um, try and hitting all, all of the social media channels and not having great success. Um, also reach out to your volunteers or um, that can help if you are a small team to help increase your capacity. Um, you may have people that support your charity and that may be able to help out with like writing copy or writing social media posts and things like that. So that can also be a great way to help um, increase capacity in your team. And yeah, try and get everyone involved in the charity, like buy into the campaign that can just, just create a real energy about the campaign. So those are some of our top tips for having a successful campaign before we get into any more questions i just want to give a reminder that we are allowing you to raise your hands and say your questions and um, directly to us if you'd like to break up me and sahil speaking and tell us your question in person so yeah don't forget that uh, well fazia's asked can we ever mail our big give donors for example if we send an opted in donor an e newsletter and they give online to our data protect give online our data protection online has an opt-out to mail appeals um yeah so if a donor that has given through to you through this campaign and then they donate to you directly and they opt in to receiving direct mail from you via your own website that's fine that that supersedes the sort of opt-in that they originally gave to you so yeah you in that situation you would be able to like mail them it's just our own one at when they initially give just doesn't cover direct mail uh beth do you want to answer this is there a minimum number of donors required for example can donations be large amounts from a few donors 
So yeah, there's no minimum or maximum amount of donors. Um, you can have as many or as few uh, donors for your campaign. Um, Tati asks, how does it work with cash donations? Yes, uh, with cash donations, like for from a beta or um, a fundraising event, you can donate them to the campaign. The way that you would have to make it work is that someone from the charity will have to collect the proceeds and then make the donation with their personal card. And then obviously you as a charity would have to reimburse them. We would advise speaking with your finance team about this to, just to make sure it's done correctly and shown in your accounts correctly. But that's the way to donate um, cash donations. And also the caveat there is that gift aid cannot be claimed as it is a collection of multiple donations. Uh, Beth, what happens if you raise more than your target? Um, I mean, great news for your <laughs> charity. Um, your all your donations will be matched up to your allocated match funding amount so anything you raise over that just counts as extra unmatched and unrestricted donations to your charity but they won't be matched any further Kylie's asking if we already have a pledge does that make any difference to the fundraising activities we do or do we treat it as the same campaign uh, would you be able to clarify that question Kylie please I'm not sure I quite understand um if you could yeah just clarify it and we can hopefully answer it for you oh there is I'm just going to break it up because I think Kylie has raised her hand so let me allow her to talk hi Kylie you should be able to unmute yourself now yeah thank you can you hear me all right yes um yeah it was just I was just a bit confused so um we've already had to um, to secure a pledge in order to to um, be part of the big give campaign so I just wondered whether or not um, the, we've obviously got an upper limit that we need to to raise mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't make any difference whether or not we've got the pledge or not we would just carry on as normal and, and use the campaign as we would yeah so the way so I think you've applied for the pledge so with the kind to mind campaign they're two different match funding models we run and i think you may have applied for um the pledge model and this is where charities secure some of the match funds from their own network which is what we call a pledge so basically yeah. a pledge is a match fund from your own supporter and then we've added more match funds in so yeah the pledge is paid to you after the campaign ends so you don't need to worry about that now you just need to focus on then securing the donations from your other sets of supporters yeah uh, and then yeah after the campaign ends you then go out to your pledger to ask them to pay you uh, the pledge directly right that's fine brilliant thank right. you no problem <laughs> thank you kylie um and Yes. Uh, question for you, Beth. Is there a Q QR code to donate? So we don't make um, any QR codes on your behalf, but you have your own individual uh, Big Give campaign pages. So you can use the unique uh, L link for your campaign page and then generate your own QR code. I know that Canva has some free options to do that. I'm pretty sure there's lots online that generate free QR codes for you. So you'll be able to generate one yourself that way. Uh, question for from Sarah. Did I miss this point? Can existing individual slash corporate donate donors give during this time or do they need to be new contacts? Yes, absolutely. Your existing supporters, corporate and or individual can give to you during this campaign. It doesn't have to be just new supporters. Um, so, yeah, obviously, please do reach out to your existing supporters and encourage them to donate if they're able to. Okay, I can see one question from Mary regarding Trello. Um, so yeah, just to clarify a bit further. So when you log in to the charity portal via our website, that is Bigger Charity Portal. That's where you can find all of our your campaign page, your charity details, uh, links to your Big Give campaign page for your Kind to Mind pro campaign project and all of our resources and then our Trello board is an external resource that is linked to through the our portal and that's like where we host all of our social media templates and links to resources and things like that and it's just because we found um through our Christmas challenge and other campaigns that this is an easier way to be able to access all of the resources and you can just click on it 
download things and then um work on it in your own like um different platforms and things so yeah just to kind of clarify the two two different things uh jen has asked if we receive a donation from a single donor via Bax to the charity directly with gift aid would it be feasible to then donate that amount to the big give campaign to be doubled and if a member of staff did so directly are they re reimbursed from the charity yeah in that situation it would have to be a staff member that donates makes the donation with their personal card and then obviously as a charity you would have to reimburse them but that is something that you would need to discuss with your finance team, A, about doing how to do that and B, how to show that correctly in your account. So that would be possible. Um, but yeah, just consult with your finance team is our advice there. And also to remember that um, Big Give have a BAX feature. So we do accept bank transfer donations Um so I believe you sent an email out about I it. have yeah we uh, sent it on Tuesday um so if any don't if you have any donors that want to donate 500 pounds or more and they don't have access to a credit or debit card they can use that backs um backs feature to make their donation we would just advise them to get that set up ahead of the campaign um just so it, it all everything is ready for when the campaign starts for them to make the donation Beth, maybe you want to answer this or I can jump in, but we, uh, Madeline's asking, we have an event run by a community group during the campaign that is not specifically linked to mental health support. Are they still able to make their donation through the portal to receive uh, match funding? Um, yeah, I, if they're donating to your campaign um, and obviously your campaign's running during, in that time, then that's absolutely fine. They'll still be able to make their donation Um to you and have their donation matched by your available match funds. Um, not sure if there's anything else you want to add to that, Sahil. No, I think that, that's covered it. Um, Mary's asking, does the Big Give take a percentage of the funding raised? If so, how much? So there are card processing fees on the donations. I'm just bringing up the fees page so I can share that with you. So yeah, on the donations, there are, car there are processing fees that... Um, that obviously we can't cover and are taken by payment processor Stripe. And just to be aware that we also have to charge VAT on the fees. If you go onto the fees um, page, which I've just linked to, you can just see a breakdown of how those fees work. If you've opted in to, for us to claim gift aid for you, there's also a gift aid admin fee. Again, that is all listed on the page. We don't take any other fees apart from those ones as listed on the page. Um, and uh, the other thing to know is that the match funds are paid out to you in full, whatever you've used up. Um, there are no fees taken off the match funds either. Uh, um, there's another one relating to fees from Jen Sahil. It says, are the yeah. transaction fees less for backs than credit cards fees on Big Give? No, the fees for backs are the same as the credit card fees. Um, they're both the same. So again, if you click on the fees page, you can see a breakdown of how that all works um, with some examples. Great. Uh, we don't have any more questions, so we'll just give you one last opportunity to either raise your hand if you want to speak to us or if you want to. Lisa's asking, do we need to be mindful of the fees in terms of reaching our target donations? So donations need to be higher to cover the fees. Um, short answer is no. Uh, we take your how you, how much you've received, uh, how much you ha, if you've reached your target before the fees are taken off donation. So um, you don't need to worry about that. It's just the gross donations um, uh, before the fees are taken off that means that you reach your target. Not um, so you don't need to worry about like then sort of trying to account for how much the fees take off and then how much do you need to raise the target? It's just what the donor initially gives to you or donates. Yes, any last questions? Anyone want to raise their hand or put a question in uh, before? If not, we can wrap up a bit early and uh, give time back to people. Oh, there is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. You should be able to unmute yourself. 
Hi there, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, yeah, just one quick question. Ask the after the campaign has closed, um, what's the time period before receiving the the donations, please? Uh, yes, that's a good question. So after the campaign ends on uh, 20th of May, we will send out the post campaign survey. Um, all charities need to complete the post campaign survey. You will have until the 28th of June to complete it. Um, and then champion funds are paid out based on like if you completed the survey. So it's really important that you just complete it. And then we will aim to pay out the match funds from mid to late July. So around 15th to the 31st of July is when we'll pay out the uh, uh, match funds. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. And then just in terms of that's match funds but any donations that you have um they're paid out every monday with a 14 day delay um by yeah. stripe so you'll receive your donations first and the match funds come a bit later exactly and i will be just uh, sending out an email um in the next few weeks just to clarify that don't um payment schedule for the donation so you just can be on the lookout for them um yeah uh -huh. Great. I can't see anyone else raising their hand or anyone asking any further questions. So I think we will wrap it up there. But I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and just asking us so many questions. Um, hopefully you found it useful. Um, but as ever, please email us at hello at biggive.org if you have any other questions and we'll uh, do our best to help you. Hope everyone has a lovely uh, rest of the day. Bye.